YouTube. Today I'm gonna to show you how to add together vectors in two dimensions. You see, in the past we've dealt with objects moving forward and back, or up and down, but we've never had an object like our little Lego guy here that was able to move horizontally and vertically. So today we're gonna to look at the displacement of this little dude as he walks around, and we're gonna solve for something called the resultant displacement. Now today we're looking at displacement vectors, but this method of adding vectors together can be applied to any type of vector. Now in a typical physics book, you'll find a set of equations that are supposed to explain exactly how to add together vectors. And that's these, the equations for adding together vector components. The issue is what is a vector component and how do we add them? You see, looking at these equations, you might be tempted to simply add together the magnitudes of each of these three vectors, but I think it's pretty clear that if we were to add the lengths of each of these three lines together, we'd get a, a length of 10, and this resultant displacement does not have a length of 10. So to make sense out of these equations and to add these vectors together, we're gonna set up a data table. On one side of the table, we're gonna look at the horizontal components of each of our displacement vectors, and on the other side of the table, we're gonna look at the vertical components of each of our displacement vectors. Now, when we're talking about vectors, we can talk about the components of a vector. And really all that means is how much of a vector is either in the horizontal or vertical direction. So looking at this two meter displacement, this two meter displacement is entirely horizontal. So that's to say there's two meters of displacement horizontally, and there's gonna be no vertical displacement. So in our horizontal column, we'll put two, and in the vertical column, we'll put a zero. This three meter displacement is downward. So it doesn't have any component or it doesn't act at all horizontally. So in our horizontal column, we're gonna put zero. It doesn't at all move horizontally there. Vertically, it has a value of three, but we have to be a bit careful here. So to go back to one dimensional motion, Vectors had a positive and a negative direction. And when we're talking about vectors in two or 3D, that's no different. The difference being now that we have two positive directions. So this three meter vector, which is downward, is actually in the negative direction. And last we have this five meter vector, which is acting diagonally up and to the right. And let's give this an angle here so we know exactly which way it's going. Now this vector can be broken up into its components. Now to go back to math class, we're really just gonna make a right triangle out of this, where the actual vector is the hypotenuse, and the other two sides of the triangle are in the horizontal and vertical axes. So looking at this triangle, we have an adjacent and an opposite side, which is gonna allow us to break up this vector into its horizontal and vertical components. See the adjacent side here has a length of five cosine 60. That works out to be 2.5. The vertical side has a length of five sine 60, which works out to be 4.3. So on our data table, we're gonna put in a horizontal component of 2.5 and a vertical component of 4.3. You see, now that we've worked out the horizontal and vertical components of all three of our vectors, we can go back to this original equation to come up with our resultant vector. You see, this first equation is telling us the horizontal component of our resultant vector. And the second equation is telling us the vertical component of our resultant vector. See, much like this diagonal vector had a horizontal and vertical component, our resultant has a horizontal and vertical component. So according to the equation, if we add up all of the horizontal components, we'll have the horizontal component of the resultant vector. And if we add up all the vertical components, we'll have the vertical component of the resultant vector. And now that we have the two components of a resultant vector, I'm gonna show you how to find both the magnitude and direction of this vector. See, so we know the resultant vector R has a horizontal component of 4.5 and a vertical component of 1.3. You might see them in math class listed as X and Y components. Now, sometimes in physics, you'll see a vector shown with a little vector symbol over this. It looks like a, a arrow. And you'll see the vector written out as the X component with a little I next to it, plus 1.3 with a little J next to it. Now, let me explain this I and J. See, any coordinate plane has an X and a Y axis. 
And so in math, you might talk about a vector as having an X and a Y component. In physics, oftentimes we'll talk about things being in the I and J direction. And that's simply to say anything in the I direction is parallel to the X axis. And anything in the J direction is parallel to the Y axis. And these little roofs or hats on the letters are simply showing that we're talking about a direction. Oh, and if you really wanna nerd it up, there's a Z axis, which we say is in the K direction. Now, despite this funny nomenclature, we haven't actually come up with the magnitude of our resultant vector. In physics, the way we show a magnitude is with absolute value symbols. And realize, because we know the two sides of a right triangle, in order to find the magnitude of this vector, we simply need to use the Pythagorean theorem. And we find the resultant displacement of our little guy is 4.7 meters. Now moving on to the direction of this resultant. We can't say this resultant is just in the positive direction because that's ambiguous. It could be up, it could be the right. So we need to be more specific. So rather than talking about up, down, or left and right, we're gonna talk about an angle. Now we're looking for this angle, which also happens to be that angle right there. These are alternate interior angles. So we know three sides of our right triangle and we can solve for the angle. Now you can use whatever trig function you want. I'm gonna use tangent because it's the best. And plugging in our values, we find the resultant displacement is 16 degrees above the positive X axis. So this has been how to add vectors together to find both the magnitude and direction of a resultant vector. I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.